Republicans plan to repeal Obamacare and replace it with nothing, throwing the nation into chaos, hospitals into bankruptcy, and the gravely ill into, well, graves. Is this really the GOP plan? I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Well, men, as you know, the major news outlets bubble up with prophecies of doom as the sand trickles from the hourglass of the Obama administration and the soon-to-be former president's signature healthcare legacy faces almost certain death. Even some Republicans quiver at the prospect of losing the plan whose creation they fought so hard to prevent. The conventional wisdom is that Republicans will replace the Affordable Care Act with little more than the wisdom of the states, the invisible hand of the free markets, and the individual choices of the American people. In other words, with nothing. In fact, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal in a recent op-ed at Politico said Obamacare must go because it's breaking the bank, both the Treasury and our personal accounts. It's promoting dependency on the federal government via Medicaid expansion and eliminating the liberty we once enjoyed to make our own health care choices. Jindal said conservative health care reform should be guided by competition, individual autonomy, and local governance. But Stephen Green, doesn't that kind of political pabulum merely promote the fears of the millions who finally got coverage thanks to Obamacare without offering them any hope after it's gone. That's the trick, isn't it? And here's the thing. Republicans do such a lousy job of, of selling what it is they're selling. What we're supposed to be selling is liberty. You look around us and what you see are the fruits of liberty. You see the fruits of, of 250 years of letting people create and and do things and build things, lasting things or, or things that, that, that don't last, that get replaced by by better and cheaper things. And you look around you and everything you see that is a marvel to behold is usually the result of, of one person with a great idea or, or one company uh, uh, reaching out in, an, in a new direction, trying to undercut their competitors with a great new product at a, or a great new price. All of these efficiencies that you see around us are the result of free markets. And you look at medicine. Medicine was going along that same path right up until the mid-1960s. What happened in the mid-1960s? We got Medicare and we got Medicaid. And what did we get? Worse stuff at a higher price. And that's for the people on Medicare and Medicaid. The private part of, uh, of our medical industry still works at creating incredible new products and, and techniques. What it doesn't do is ever introduce those price efficiencies that you would expect in a free market. And the reason is all of this government interference, all of this government paperwork, all of these, uh, all, all of this uh, feather bedding by, uh, by Washington and the insurance companies and the hospital administrators, all of the rest that comes from having tax dollars at their disposal. Republicans first need to sell how government screwed it up before they can sell how government is going to fix it because you've got to be honest with voters. And the GOP, as I've said, has done a lousy job at that. They need to get on that right now. I usually don't offer a rebuttal to things said on this show, but I just want to let our viewers know that I know that that stuff that Stephen Green said about free markets cannot be true. I was actually watching a show that disproved that. Uh, it was an MSNBC show that I was watching on a big screen TV that I paid about $30,000 for about 10 years ago, and you can now buy at Sam's Club for 400 bucks. Yeah. Uh, Bill Whittle. You're a messaging maven. I'd like to evaluate, I, like, I want you to evaluate how well Republicans are messaging this repeal and replace campaign and what you might do differently. Well, obviously they're, they're to one, on one degree, just to say that we're gonna repeal and repa replace is messaging for the Republican base. We've been fighting this monstrosity since 2009, but yeah. you're much correct on the greater point, Scott. You cannot just simply say we're going to destroy this without saying what we're going to replace it with. I'd like to see the Department of Education abolished, but you can't start by saying we're going to abolish the Department of Education and replace it with what? Um, the healthcare thing is obviously a very complex thing, but right now we're in a death spiral. Very roughly, if you have, for every dollar of healthcare now, the federal government takes a dollar of, of my money for health care. They peel off about 33 cents for their standing army. That dollar then goes to the insurance company. They peel off another 33 cents for their standing army. And the doctor gets about a third of the dollar. He gets about 33 cents on the dollar, something like that. And so he has to, in order to make 
uh, the living that he's used to and that he's worked for and studied for, he has to do three times as many patients. If you cut this paperwork out completely, it's astonishing what will happen to prices. You'll often find surgeons who will do procedures cash only for a tenth of what they bill, or, or more, or less rather, I should say. But the main thing here, Scott, is that health insurance is not really insurance. Insurance is supposed to be there to protect you against catastrophic failure. That's what, that's what insurance is for. And the more that an insurance policy has to cover, the more expensive it gets. For example, my car has a pretty good insurance policy on it, and I got a little ding in the door. And if I didn't have any deductible, I just take the car in and they can spend $600 to fix the ding because I didn't like it. This is the same thing as going to a doctor with a mild cold. When doctors have to do so many of these trivial, uh, trivial kind of things, it makes the prices go up. There's a lot of things that people ne don't necessarily need to go see a doctor for. I think if you were to do something along the lines of cash visits up to two or three hundred dollars, something like that, and insurance doesn't kick in until you have a serious ongoing issue. It's called stop loss insurance. If you break these things up into little pieces, it automatically gets cheaper. So there are many things that are unique to the health insurance industry that make it just bat guano insane. <laughs> Yep. Well, as Bill suggests, a serious policy debate does not happen in the public square or even on the most thoughtful of news shows. After all, how could it? Legislation is so complicated that even the most well-prepared congressional aide doesn't know the half of it, and her boss knows much less. We might wish that the public were better informed about national health care policy, but that's impossible. Any such policy, by definition, would be too complicated to be understood well enough to allow for reasonable national debate. That's why we should have no national health care policy. None. This myth that Republicans can't repeal Obamacare because they have nothing with which to replace it is entirely alien to our Constitution and, frankly, to any intelligent view of governance. If government should have any role in health insurance and medicine, it should be as close to the people as possible, meaning at the state or even county level. Removing the federal government from the market would increase competition immediately, bolstering supply to meet demand, innovating solutions to meet customer needs, driving down costs and multiplying voluntary choices. You know, the only sick people who would be marginalized are those poor, mentally afflicted folk who refer to each other preposterously as the honorable gentleman from blah, 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 and so forth. Perhaps a reduction in their influence might prove just the cure for their delusions of grandeur. For Bill Whittle, Stephen Green, and the Right Angle team, I'm Scott Ott. Thank you to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible. <laughs> <laughs>